Oh, wait a minute, buckle! This is <laughs> jump and shoot. Uh, and I think we're about to wrap up this world if if and I don't die. So, um, I need to go <laughs> see if I can cook up some mules first because uh, I feel like that would help. All right, less miserables. Uh, I can't make anything. Oh, I can make this one. Oh yeah, I figured out what my problem was with the egg thing when we played it <laughs> a couple episodes ago. Uh, I never was pressing the shoulder buttons, the L, L and R buttons, to actually like drop that yolk in the thing. So I just pulled the egg apart with the control stick, and it just it broke. So I never did that part. All right, so in this one, you just like saute shit. I don't think I ever figured this one out either. Oh Jesus Christ! Too much? What? I I don't understand, dude. What the f fuck do they want me to do? Too little? Sorry. Like, I try to, like, start the circular motion with the control stick, and it- Okay, I can't make any more. <laughs> I try to start the circular motion, and then it takes a while to wind up, and it doesn't do anything. So I go harder, and then it says, you put too much. So, like, man, what the fuck? The fruit one is easy to make. It's just chopping shit. Alright, I can do this one. This one is easy, it's just timing. You don't have to deal with the physics of like the controller or the control sticks or anything. <laughs> Alright. Nope. Alright. I just need like options to put in my dish. Uh, sure, I did it. You get two full apples and you put them in the bucket. Alright. So, I did a little bit more investigative, not journalism, but <laughs> experiencing of, I hope it doesn't send me back to Twilight Town, that would suck, of uh, Balan Wonderworld. It's pretty much the new Mighty Number no. 9, except it wasn't kickstarted. But it is from somebody who once was part of, like, the original IP of something else. In this case, it, it was, you got somebody who worked on, like, the Sonic games and was part of the creative team of Knights. See, so you, you got Balan, who is pretty much designed to look like Knights, and similarly. But, okay, so I learned that Yuji Naka... Uh, design like the action parts of Sonic not like the context or story or any of that shit and uh, cuz you know he would probably just make Sonic without like the part where Dr. Robotnik wants to roboticize animals and um, like take over the world he would just let things play out and let and people's imagination do the rest <laughs> I guess <laughs> um so that's kind of what he did for Bell and Wonder World he didn't put in any dialogue whatever the dialogue there was was in Japanese and it's just like nothing was addressed though and Okay, I put on two accessories. I want to do more power, baby. And uh, apparently, there is a a companion book, which is unheard of for a game coming from a company like Square Enix, who publishes very grandiose like fantasy games, and uh. Also, I learned this from watching some Kami Johnny's like casual, just 
talk about the game was like he oh crap you can eat a lot you can eat so much and just bug yourself why what have i been doing up until now okay i'm gonna remember that i don't remember to do that shit i need to save first um so, so yugi and yuji naka was brought on into Square Enix to work on this game, and his basically what Square Enix said to him was, "Okay, Mr. Sonic Man, you get one chance to make a platformer, and this is it." They're it like everybody would be like, "Okay, our take. I, I guess I can't make a game." It was a, it was a creative challenge for himself to make a game without any context or dialogue. And just through like expressions and people going like oh and dancing and weird cutscenes I don't make that, that don't explain shit. <laughs> so it was a thing he brought on to himself. He can't he can't be like okay I'll I remember that next time. This is was his one time to make a platformer. They're not ever going to be interested in like hearing what he has to say again. <laughs> and it, okay, so we go into a dark hole. And that's how we get to this toy void. <laughs> um, okay. Is that the, like the building from Wreck-It Ralph up there? And, uh, yeah. Just... The, the, the game design decisions to have... To, to be based on costumes and... You know, doing things that they do akin to, like, people compare it up a lot to, uh, Psycho, not Psychonauts, um, they compare it at all, for, okay, for, like, the levels, the people you, whose dreams you visit, that's compared to Psychonauts, but for, like, the gameplay, they compare it a lot to, uh, They people can compare it, it to Super Mario Odyssey, where you use Mario's hat to take control of enemies, and you take on different forms sometimes, temporarily. Um, but I think it's closer to Kirby, where you get like copy abilities that do different things. But oh, we're about to get Woody Smackdown. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah. Your loneliness But of all the like the gameplay footage I've seen of Balan Wonderworlds, everything just seems like a bad idea. Like like. They should have fought harder to make it more complex than just a one-button game, you know? Some characters can't jump. You can legitimately be soft-locked out of parts of a level because you can't jump. And the only way to jump is to get hit, lose all your copy abilities, or only get the ones that can let you jump. You know, some of them don't even let you... Or it's just one where you walk around and they have like an attack that keeps you on the ground. So you have to lose them all if you don't have any that can jump. And then... Then you can jump! <laughs> and some parts... Some copy abilities... Copy abilities? Some costumes are inside like little crystals. What... And you need a key that's usually nearby that's not even worth like making it locked to begin with. You just need to get that key which opens the diamond thing and then you get the costume. It's like this is so roundabout of a challenge. Um, they should have been dead like five seconds ago. How did he hit us all if Sora wasn't even over there? 
Or maybe he was over there. You know what? I appreciate moments like this where the Organization 13 members are having more conversations with the, the Disney Pixar characters because, like, they're talking directly instead of, like, him just talking past them and talking directly to Sora. Find the hearts shown to yours. I think that's a line for a remind. <laughs> Alright, so we got the King of Toys here, who's a gigantic UFO. Uh, Space Knight, I guess. Oh, now we're back to Toyland. What the fuck is this shit? <laughs> Alright, so you got a giant heartless in this metaphysical toy room. Uh, that's a 2D image, and if it's not, I'd be impressed. Th this is a skybox. I'm, like, it must be. There's, like, there's no way that it wouldn't be. Okay. Now, this guy's head is, like, on his head. And all you gotta do is beat him senseless. Uh, let's use Wreck-It Shit Town. <laughs> Felix, Felix, <laughs> Felix, Felix Jr. Yeah, he makes that noise. He doesn't talk. All right. It, like, this isn't fun. So, what's supposed to happen after this? Rush. Uh, okay. I guess I finished... <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. I don't like it. <laughs> it's not as like fun to use as like aerials or stitches or anybody's. Uh, anyway, Balan Wonder shit. Uh, gigantic misguided ambition. Like, why would he think that you can make a game without? I mean, there are good. There are good games that like don't. There are simple enough games that don't need dialogue to, like Journey or uh, Ori in the Blind Forest or something like that. But you have this character inspired by knights, and the best people give this game shit for some reason, but I think it's pretty good still. Knights Journey into Dreams. Um, the one where you play as two new kids and they have their own worlds. You have all new worlds, first of all. Knights and Riala are back. Like, they have dialogue. There's, like, some drama going on. And it's actually good. And imagine they don't do any of that for this new game. Like, why would they not do that? I just, I, I don't understand. Um... And there was some kind of challenge to, or okay, Yuji Naka was saying like I originally only had in mind like forty, but the creative team helped me make it eighty, which means what they actually did was probably split apart abilities that would have like two different abilities that would have been on the same ca like costume, and spread them across forty different more. So some of them are actually redundant. The only difference between them is that you would find them in somebody else's world themed after something else. Like, there's a, a, a dragon that shoots a fireball. Whoa. I didn't realize I was doing this. And in another world, there'd be, like, a, a snowman that shoots a, an, a snowball. Or a robot that shoots a, a laser. Uh, like, they all do the same thing. But they're different costumes... Because somebody decided, oh, I can just split it apart into, like, three more artificially. And it's not, like, really making more ideas for costumes. Oh, my God. Will these be the first boss I never died against? <laughs> I sure do hope so. What are you doing? I, I tried the shield because I knew he was doing something. 
can I? Oh shit. Uh, well, this isn't gonna help since he's moving too fast. Uh, I guess I'll do this while I'm at it. This isn't very good at hitting enemies, I, I realize. Especially ones that move. Uh, are you done? I guess so. Can't zoom to you. Okay, that's disappointing. What are you doing? Okay, he rebuilds the town, which is nice. Thank you. Can you zoom up to him now? Oh, he has a... I just noticed his face. He has like two lights on the front and then the mouth. But he also has a head on top. That's very Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> like, like, you have like this thing with like multiple heads. Kind of like the parasite cage from... Monstro. Donald Meteor! Okay, god. I can't freaking chase him like this anymore. <laughs> Using my stupid attack. Okay, I'm under him. Woo! Oh shit. Okay, it's not something you can counter. Good. Okay, can I, like, get up to you, please? I should... Okay, you know what? I used this on top of him, and it just set me down to the ground. Uh... Well, now the whole world is destroyed, so I can't get on top of him anymore. No! No, 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 no! <laughs> this boss is, like, a million times easier... Shit, fuck, shit, fuck. <laughs> I ought to eat my fucking words. Because then that freaking Brawl doll. Because, <laughs> like, there's no enemies you have to deal with right now. And she's not, like, constantly killing you. Oh, I'm out of magic. Uh, my magic's about to come back, like, right now. And I wasted on here. I wanted to do magic attacks. Oh well. No! I'm so close! Ah, oh, god damn it. <laughs> I think I did pretty good for my first time finding this boss on Critical. So yeah, Ball and Running On is a tragic story of a man thinking he could do more with less. <laughs> and uh it sucks so i watched this guy i don't remember his name i'll put the thumbnail or i put the a, a picture of him in the video um he beat bandland wonderland <laughs> it number one problem it's not called bandland wonderland uh number two problem you don't even play as a damn guy and uh but yeah, I watched this guy's 100% like analysis of what you get for doing it. Um, I forgot what my mods were, so he's gonna come back as a monster probably. Um, so this everyone knows that like you have to do the mini the quick time events and get a perfect rank to get the gold hat. And then you have to find all the balance statues across the world, and then you have to do get gold on like the sport mini games for some reason. And then you have to build the Tower of Tims, which is like the game's like little little mini game meta game going on in the central hub world, where you have to build this con mouse trap contraption <laughs> using the little birds. Well, I'm pretty sure they're supposed to represent like. The the Nightmarin, not the Nightmarin, I, I don't remember their names, but like the little cherub dudes from Nights in the Dreams. The Nightopians. I'm pretty sure they're, re they're supposed to represent the Nightopians, but the game doesn't tell you fucking shit because it thinks it doesn't have to. It's kind of pretentious now that I think about it. You learn, you learn everything through this book. And all these characters that are supposed to be random characters that you, whose dreams you go inside of, 
they actually come across in me. Like, why don't you just have this dialogue in the game? I don't get it. Um, so, you, you build a tower just to complete the game, along with getting the statues and the gold hats. And I think if you do everything, then you get the Balan costume, where he just feels overpowered because he he, he can jump attack. <laughs> He can jump and attack and like walk forever in the air. And it's like, why isn't the game built around this? You know, the actual knights inspired gameplay. You know, because the problem, the problem with Bell and Wonderworld <laughs> is that it's, it's a game use like inspired by the aesthetic of knights, but it's not an actual knights game. Mighty Number no. Nine was at least a jump and shoot Mega Man style game. Like people complain about the level design, but it still has like you get powers from feeding the bosses. There's still like role equivalent. There's still like a proto man equivalent. Like the character parallels are all there. People just don't like the execution of the game. The fact that it was a Kickstarter and then like it had all these things associated negatively. I think the guy didn't take it very well. <laughs> the, the the guy, one of the guys who made the game, didn't take it very well. And uh, this is like just barely on par with that. But um, yeah, they it's a missed opportunity to just make it that you know about playing as the guy, just like you do in Knights. Like, the whole point of Knights was, like, I think Yuji Naka was quoted as saying, or somebody was quoted as saying, uh, I wanted to make a game where you can fly and do tricks and shit and have it be fun. All right. Where is that philosophy for this game? I wanted a game where you can only, you can't jump half the time and you turn into a fucking box randomly <laughs> and you have no control over it. Like, what was the design philosophy there? Well, I guess, technically speaking, the philosophy was I want to make a game without any dialogue. Forgetting that, like, you have to make the game fun, too. <laughs> it's not even, like, artsy, no kind of no dialogue, like Journey. Or a lot of games around that time. <laughs> Who is this? Mickey. Okay. <laughs> Riku. And who... I, okay, you know what I also watched? I watched all the... Uh, a compilation of all the cutscenes in Ball and Wonder World. And... A lot of these characters... Or, I guess... This, the Psychonaut levels <laughs> that like the people whose dreams you go inside of their motivations for falling into what i can only describe as like depression or obsession or some or some kind of sin well, replicas are basically it's like really oh, dumb what? Oh, yeah. wait what <laughs> did you just drop that replicas are basically human vessels to place hearts in right They're so real in fact that you'd actually mistake them for people that's weird hearts, the replicas will become people cool but, if that's <laughs> cool, but I, I don't really get it yep the replica takes the form of the heart inside it that's perfect i'll talk to ienzo he was in the organization back then so he might know more. Great. I I don't think I think it's weird that they would have Do you guys think they're after They would get back the memories of being in Organization 13 since they're like they're they literally can't hold memories because they're just husks. Like meta husks that just operate on like orders. 
I'm like, okay. And they're just, they don't even have the personalities of the people that they used to be. Okay. Your Majesty! What a couple of schmucks. No, they don't. Maybe they should. Um, but yeah, so... You get people like the bug girl, who... It's not even like she... I, I can't even explain it. It's not even like she obsesses with bugs so much as... She became consumed with liking bugs so much that she didn't make real friends and that like closed her heart to everybody else, okay? Uh, now we gotta go to my favorite world. Here. Uh, special weapons. You obtain a number of special weapons, SW, that produce a viral... You can um, read your gummy ship, which is one special weapon before you embark. Press Y to use your special weapon. No, I want to do it. Special weapon. Twin shot, baby! Alright, now we have an actual thing. And, uh... Yeah, no, somebody else, like... The, in, the man unseen by everyone, who I think is like the last level. Or something like that. And he... His heart becomes closed off because he's trying to like recycle but nobody notices him so he turns invisible like it's very surface level shit wait am I about to do it again I, I did this in another video I, I just got confused what is that oh there they are Oh, I thought it was like a secondary attack, not a secondary whatever this is. Oh, and then it has to recharge, and then I can use it again. Uh, interesting. What is that? What are you? Uh. Oh, no. And, um... So that, yeah, the guy turns invisible and he becomes like sad or some shit. And the level theme is based around like junk and garbage and like that's his whole theme, right? But every time you complete a, a level, uh, Balan in the okay, every time you complete a level, they do this stupid dance number, which. Uh, if you 100% the game, you can hear everything in English, and the lyrics are even worse. I would rather it much sound like whatever language it's supposed to be, like fictional or whatever. <laughs> but, uh, this guy has a big health thing. Oh, it's like a sun, because we're going to Corona. <laughs> That's clever! Just like how the previous boss was a, uh, a toy robot thing. Um, yeah, there's a stupid dance number, and then there's a cutscene where their, like, situation is resolved, and, uh, Balan is in every cutscene, like, it was him the whole time in the background doing stuff, but it's like, no you weren't, I, he was here helping you the whole time, no you weren't, like, what? What kind of writing is this, you know? It sucks. <laughs> How am I supposed to... Don't I have a dodge? I do have a dodge. He's gonna take you back to the past. Take to play these giddy sh... These giddy shames that suck ass. <laughs> anyway, I gotta fight that jerk again. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I had to fight that thing last time, and it's just gone? Ugh, whatever. Whatever, I, I'm over it. I don't, I don't care. I can kind of see a chair in the background. I don't know if you can, oh, that's what we're seeing.
Rapunzel. I don't know. I, you know, we talked about this. I talked about this with Nick or Nico on the other video, but like, I feel like she argued with that Ariel is when they started doing like the big eye, same face thing. I. I. Ariel was like the only one at the time up until this movie. You know, they all look pretty different. Like, Jasmine, I don't think Mulan's technically your princess. Uh, Mulan, Jasmine, Sleeping Beauty, Snow White, they all look pretty different. Um, but yeah, like, Ariel was the first to look like this with, like, the big eyes and then, like, the small face kind of thing. But then, I don't remember which came after it Aladdin. And then he had Milan. And then... Yeah, they all look pretty different. But then they... Then as soon as this movie came out... Uh, oh my god, my mod is on. Look at that! <laughs> Sora, you look pretty super fly, though. If you know what I mean. You got the drip. You got the water coming out of your veins with the drip, baby. Got me, baby. <laughs> um, but yeah, the same face syndrome started with Tangled and Rapunzel, and then after that, Moana had the same face, Anna had the same face, Elsa had the same face. Uh, what else was there? Tiana kind of got there, but you saw her as a frog most of the movie, so it didn't really matter. That's my hot take. It's probably bad. I'm at least acknowledging it, therefore it's okay. <laughs> Sora, with your drip so bright, let me make my escape tonight. The Heartless! Oh yeah, my other <laughs> mod is on with the heroes thing. I'm definitely keeping that, because <laughs> that looks fucking cool. For it, oh Goofy, you're being skewered. <laughs> I'm sorry. There's mods for Donald and Goofy, but uh, I don't really care. Not for like their models, but I think their weapons. But you don't really want to mess with them since you don't get to see them half the time. Yeah, my thanks. This guy is alright. He's kind of a jerk. But like, these guys are right. Yeah, okay, I get you. This world, unlike the Frozen world, actually kind of is like the plot of the movie, which is great. Um, I mean, not, that's not to say that Frozen isn't the plot of the movie. But, uh... You kind of just dropped in in the middle of it. This one, it kind of, you get a little bit of Rapunzel's backstory, and but then after that, it like, it, this becomes like the structure of the movie. You know, Flynn Rider appears. He's like, oh no, I'm being chased by the bullies, the like the bounty hunter brothers or whatever. And you got Mother Gothel looking fine as hell, <laughs> looking. Fine as hell, as she do. Boo, the costume doesn't stay on during uh, the thing. You also don't see the transformations because, like, I'm supposed to be using a shield, but he's just kind of holding it like uh, that. I'm sorry, Sora. Alright. You're done. Oh wait, huh? I'm gonna do overkill here. But yeah, I, I I will say I'm gonna say this before we get there. I don't really care, but um, I wish Mother Gothel's heartless looked better. <laughs> like they never make the heartless -s 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 based on the characters. Like at least look remotely close to the actual character. 
there's just kind of like heartless designs that they say oh no mother gothel turned into a heartless oh no hans turned into a heartless but it doesn't even like look like close to those guys but whatever i love this world dude <laughs> i say that look at sword with the drip got the drip got the drip by any means <laughs> i think that's what it says but it's like mirrored you can't really tell all right what do we got here Uh, yeah, I was saying before I got disgustingly distracted, Bond on Wonder World, you, you would have to make that game again from the ground up if you wanted to, like, quote-unquote fix it, because there's no game bug fixes you can do other than, like, removing entire costumes just so you don't, you don't run the risk of being redundant with some of them. Or, like... Like, I get it that some of them are themed after the mine you go inside of, but there's there's no reason for that. <laughs> or it, it would be a nice touch, but it just doesn't... You can't do that across 80, you know? I, I feel like since that, they wanted the focus to be on using the costumes to puzzle solve, okay, sure, but... There should have been less of them. The, the power-up should have done more. And you shouldn't lose them after getting hit once. What I forgot to say was about at the end of the game, or when you 100% complete it, you get to play as Balan, right? But it's not even really playing as Balan. It's the costume of Balan. So you see the character's dumb face on top of Balan's head. And it's like, that's not... That's not fun. <laughs> And then, uh, it, Balan's costume follows the same rules as the rest of them. Whereas if you get hit once, the costume goes away, just like all the others. But this is supposed to be like the god costume. <laughs> like, ugh. What the fuck were they thinking? I don't know how long I was recording so I'll give it like an extra 10 minutes. This, it might be, it's just like a half hour. Uh, sure, so we don't stand too close to that. You might get like mugged or something. Oh, even worse, you just fell. I thought you were gonna die. Hey, sword ditched us. What the fuck? What the fuck? <laughs> Oh, okay. I have another mod that I want to throw on maybe next time. Like, that's gonna look crazy. Whoa, it's Rapunzel's house in the middle of the valley. Boop, 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 boop. Down in the valley where a chemical spill, boop, 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 spilled on the people living in. Uh, Capitol Hill. <laughs> and then... In their happy breathing home. The Rapunzel's... Now, and this is pretty much the movie, you know? They recreate the cutscenes, like, in this game engine. It's kind of cool. Hang on, Blonde. I'm Flynn Rider, baby. That's not even my real name. Haha. <laughs> Spoiler. Um, I will say real quick, I do love the show, Tangles of Hundred Adventure. I don't know if I ever talked about it, but, like, it actually goes places. <laughs> like, it starts off just kind of, like, a puzzle being pretty and, like, funny and shit and cute all the time. Um... Which is fine, but uh, it starts introducing like plot lines of characters becoming villains, and it's like, oh my god, this has got a little bit of depth. <laughs> like, I think the first guy is there's like this tinker guy who turns out is experimenting on like potions to 
reverse Rapunzel's hair power or something. And it's like, holy shit. <laughs> and then he becomes a good guy later on. But um, there's a lot of moments like that where there there's villains that get like small little redemption arcs. And then there's a, like a... I think at the end of season two, there's a uh, like a, a new central villain that is the rest just is there to the rest of season three, and it ends like really well. And uh, her supporting cast, Rapunzel's supporting cast, is Flynn Rider, of course, uh, the chameleon dude, and her new friend Cassandra, who's like one of the handmaids, who's also a knight. Uh, I don't know what that's about. <laughs> who's, excuse me, who's also the captain of the guard's daughter. That's why she knows how to fight, which is cool. Um, she has an arc, like, really early on, and it, that's really cool. And it just felt like it watching, like, and it, it was a really respectable show. Not in, like, a... I actually think My Little Pony is good. No, not in that kind of way. This just it respects its audience, even if it's like made for girls. Like I feel like if I was a kid, if I was like a fifteen-year-old kid, I'd be like, "This is actually kind of good." But I'm a twenty-eight-year-old man, and uh, I'm saying that about a cartoon made for little girls. But who's to say they can't also have an action show that isn't? Making them stupid, like the new Powerpuff Girls 2016. I can't. I don't know why I called it the new Powerpuff Girls when it's been around since like forever. One side of my laptop is really hot. Meanwhile, the other side is not. And I feel like this is where the the hard drive is probably. <laughs> so, yeah, I like this world I don't know what's like a good stopping point <laughs> just kind of like watching this go kind of like a thing let's check it out yes I agree let's do it but first <laughs> we're gonna save and stop <laughs> 